Hi, everybody. Um, I'm going to begin by talking about dense matrices, and I'm going to explain why sparse matrices are different, and then try to motivate why we should do them well. So first of all, old, plain old matrices that everyone knows about, they have constant time access. They take up space uh, proportional to the product of the number of rows and columns. In this example one, there's 16 units of storage for a 4 by 4 matrix. We could lay them out in memory by row, um, each row beginning every four columns, because that's the number of columns we have. Um, if we wanted to record the starting point of each of those rows, we could, they're exactly um, four apart, so we don't even really have to remember that. If we wanted to write an accessor for elements, um, this is the constant time accessor. It just calculates an offset and returns a value straight out of the array. Sparse matrices are a bit different. This is the example I thought would be most helpful to think about. If we have a town where everyone has 10 friends, um, and if two people are friends, we record the distance between their homes in the matrix, and otherwise zero. If you look at how that matrix scales with the population, the matrix, uh, the size of the matrix is going up quadratically, while the um, number of actually interesting information stored is going up linearly. So we need a different way of storing this that doesn't have this bad behavior. Sparse matrices are mostly zero, proportional to one dimension, like in the previous example. Uh, there's a lot of practical examples that are interesting. Nearest neighbors in a mesh or circuit, if you like engineering or physics. Um, page rank, uh, links between web pages are pretty sparse. Uh, a social graph, like at Facebook, there's machine learning applications as well. The key considerations for sparse matrices are that the storage used and the runtime ought to be proportional to the number of non-zeros stored. And oftentimes this means that that's varying as the number of rows or number of columns instead of as their product. Memory layouts and algorithms proportional to, that si to, to the whole size of the matrix are going to be unworkable. So we need new approaches. How do we squeeze out zeros from our layout? So here's the original dense matrix and the row offsets. If we take all the zeros out and keep the, rows pointing, keep the row offsets pointing to the beginnings of the, um, of the rows in the squashed um, layout, then we don't know where the, exactly which columns we took, so we have to add column indices as well. And we get something called compressed sparse row format. Element access now is no longer constant time, but we can binary search because the column indices are in sorted order. So we end up with log time access instead of constant time. So here's how we might do that. I won't belabor this, but the thing to note here is that sometimes we have to return a zero because we didn't find the value. And that means that we can't return a reference. This is like the proxy iterator problem. Efficiency for sparse matrices. Um, again, the runtime needs to depend on the number of non-zero entries and not the size of the matrix overall. So that means that we cannot simply apply dense algorithms with this sparse element accessor if we want proper speed. And in practice, totally different code is going to get used. Uh, this is rich territory excuse me, for some modern C++. The best-in-class implementations out there for sparse matrix algorithms are usually Fortran or C. And if you're used to nice modern C++, it's kind of painful to read some of the, some of the code. Um, although it's, it's often very well written, it's still C. Um, so in conclusion, efficient sparse matrix calculations are super important. C++ has a lot to offer in this area. Believe me, I've been reading a lot of C code. Um, there is a proposal for linear algebra, uh, a linear algebra proposal for the standard, and I wanted to, to record a couple of requests. First of all, that, that element access should not, returning a reference should not be mandatory, and um, that we enable efficient sparse algorithms by supplying column or row accessors that provide you with a sparse view not a dense view of the column or row. So you can iterate over the non-zero values. And uh, I hope I've sort of piqued your interest in sparse matrices and sparse matrix algorithms. I think there's, it's very interesting. I can't believe I have 30 seconds left. <laughs> Thank you.